So, uh, so good afternoon. Welcome. Um, I'm Andrew Chapman. I'm, um, I head up a couple of the groups in the, in the mainframe group at, at CA. Um, one of them is storage. I'm not going to be talking about that today. Um, if you want to talk about storage, you can come and talk to me afterwards and I'll, uh, I'll probably run away. Um, I also run the, uh, effectively the non-ZOS products um, on, on the mainframe. So VSE, ZVM, uh, and Linux. And I'm going to be talking about that side of the business, the, the Linux side of the business, um, for, for 30 minutes today. So uh, I thought this was very clever. I'm using uh, weather metaphors to talk about the cloud. Um, but then I think a lot of things I do are very clever. Unfortunately, I'm in a, a minority of one, typically. But um, So we're going to be talking about the cloud very briefly, just on a slide or two, talking about how the mainframe and the cloud play together today, so what we see today, what we, or where we want to see and where we think we're going to see the mainframe and the cloud come together a, a little bit more, and then talk about why it hasn't happened already and what we can do to, to encourage that, uh, that transition and bringing together the mainframe and the cloud. So first of all, and I don't think this is news to, to anybody. Um, it used to be, actually not that long ago, it used to be when we talked to people about the cloud, some of them would say, oh, no, 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 we would never put our stuff in the cloud. Then, even just within the last year or so, you know, it, it transitioned to yet. We, we'll never put our stuff in the cloud yet. P people realize it's inevitable. And, and, you know, now we look at it and... Don't get me wrong, there are, there are workloads and, and, and payloads that people will not put in the cloud at this point and may never put in the cloud. But, but it, it really has become part of everybody's infrastructure in an incredibly short amount of time. And, and some of these things from the bottom, which were just you know, screenshots taken out of, uh, out of news reports, show that you know, even agencies in, within the government that you would think would be very risk averse realize that the cloud is not actually as big a risk as, as, as we at first thought. And certainly, a, a lot of those questions that people had initially about security have, have gone away, and, and the cloud is, is seen now as being a, a major part of people's environment. So, so what do we see today with, with the mainframe and the cloud? And, and I, think, I think it's kind of encapsulated in this loosely coupled. So... For sure, those systems that are running in the cloud have some interoperability with the mainframe. The mainframe is, in a lot of companies, certainly a lot of the, the kind of companies that are, are here this week, the mainframe is, is the central sort of transactional processing engine. It, it's the heart of a lot of those systems, those mobile systems, business critical systems. So the cloud is having to somehow interact with the mainframe, but it's very indirect. It's very loose. Um, so, so what we see is, at, at the back end, the mainframe is doing transactional processing stuff. It's kind of churning away. Then there's layers of abstraction between the mainframe and, what's, and what we're seeing in the cloud, what's coming out the end of the cloud. Another approach we see, actually quite frequently, uh, is, is that people will do ETL. ETL is extract, transform, and load. So, so I'll, I'll perhaps take a, um, some database data. I'll print it to XML, you know, so I basically sort of denormalize that content, put it out into some kind of file format, push it out through a firewall onto the cloud, and then it's consumed on the cloud. We see people replicating data sets out onto the cloud so they can be processed on the cloud. So that kind of indirect, loosely coupled approach. Certainly, if you, if you, go, to a, if you go to a cloud conference, no one's talking about the mainframe. If you talk to a customer about the cloud, they're not thinking about the mainframe. The mainframe is some part of the infrastructure almost as far away from the cloud as, as it can get. That's generally the mentality. It's not to say that the mainframe team don't see the value of the cloud. Every time we talk to customers about, about the cloud, mainframe customers about the cloud, they get it. They understand, they understand it's coming. And I think also they see the synergy between the cloud and, and the mainframe. Because the cloud's an external system to the, the core of the data center. It's something that's being managed by somebody else. It's something that's providing a service as a black box. In a lot of ways, the cloud and the mainframe, they have a lot in common, not just from a technology perspective, but actually from, from how they're viewed from inside of certainly IT operations. So, 
So what's, what's the vision and, and, and where do we need to get to? I, I mean, it's, it's probably not really rocket science. The, the cloud, I would say actually, even though I wrote this, I would say you know, I've got my tense wrong. The cloud has moved from being a science project being something that people used as, as shadow IT to being a core part of many companies' infrastructure. The, the, the mainframe, we, we need to take a few approaches. And, and actually, I just had this conversation with one of the guys from IBM who, who heads up their cloud services. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways of looking at the mainframe when you're thinking cloud. So, so one of them is, well, it can be a platform so you can run Linux on a mainframe, and you can run Linux at huge scale on a mainframe very inexpensively. So if you're managing cloud implementations and you want them to scale, you want that elasticity, you, you want a robust platform, then you know, we should be looking at the mainframe, looking at IFLs and, and deploying Linux on the mainframe. So just saying, hey, forget about ZOS, forget about Kix, forget about all that stuff. It's just another platform for Linux. The, the, the second thing is to say, so ETL, Extract, Transform, and Load, very attractive from some respects. So first of all, we know how to do it. We've been doing ETL for a long time, a long, long time between systems and actually between the mainframe and other systems. It's very, very inefficient, though, because you're taking something, extracting it, converting it into some format, transporting it, dumping it somewhere where then it needs to be read, decoded, and used very, very inefficient. It's nice and safe, it has a lot of other benefits, but it's inefficient. We, we need to have a direct connection. We need to open up the mainframe so that those cloud services, and to be honest, private services as well in, in your own data center, can connect directly to the mainframe in a secure way without compromising the performance and the security of the mainframe. But we can't keep doing this sort of loosely coupled a couple of hops, get the data out, getting it across before, before, you, before you're consuming it. It needs to be seen as being a, 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 a tier one, a first level part of the cloud infrastructure. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think that's something that you can just do. I mean, you could, you could get t-shirts printed that say the mainframe is a tier one part of the cloud and people would have no idea what you were talking about unless you're at CA World, in which case they would go, yeah, I like your t-shirt. Um, I think we have to prove that out. I think we have to show how the mainframe actually contributes to the cloud in a very, very efficient way to, to, to sort of to raise it up. I, I don't think it's something we can do directly. And then my, um, my attempt at humor, um, we, we have to recognize the data center. When, when I say data center to somebody, in their mind, they imagine a building with walls and inside that building that there are systems running. And obviously that still exists. But typically in that data center, people are thinking about those distributed systems. So the cloud, remarkably in a very short length of time, became part of that extended data center. So people now view the cloud as being part of an extension to that data center, data center without walls. We need to view the mainframe in the same way. So the mainframe and the cloud are both sort of adjunct to those core systems, but they need to be viewed as and managed as part of that broader data center. So everybody recognizes, certainly everyone in this, probably in this audience, and, and uh, anyone who understands the mainframe recognizes that it makes sense logically. And actually, I did, I did a presentation a couple of hours ago, and I said, if we were all Vulcans, so if we all just were driven by, by logic, there would be no question. We would all have Linux running on the mainframe. It would be the core of our cloud deployments because it makes sense. So, so why, why isn't it? If it makes sense and it's cost effective and it works, by the way, it works 24 by 7 by 365 and disaster recovery works on it, unlike everything else. Um, so, so why isn't it working? So the first one, it's a cultural thing. When we say mainframe, people think pictures like this. People are proud to say, oh, yeah, you know, I remember when the world was black and white and I worked on a mainframe, you know, it was great. So culturally, people, and the cloud, of course, the cloud is, is, is well, whoops, 
the cloud's fluffy. I mean, it's got to be, it's, it's, a, it's a fluffy thing. It's, it's new and, and it's, I mean, it's, it's a cloud. So it's the most modern thing you could ever imagine. And the mainframe's this old, decrepit system. So how can those two things go together? We need to educate people that the mainframe is the most sophisticated piece of equipment in their data center. The highest performance commercially available processor on the market. It's not an old, decrepit, black and white system. Certainly, uh, what we call lockout, um, and, and we're, we're doing a lot around this, we have to make it easier to access those services that are running on the mainframe from uh, not just the cloud, but from all systems in a way that's controlled and secure and high performance. Okay? It, you, it can't be that you have to bring in some kind of mainframe specialist to be able to make that connection. We have to open up those systems. So we, we, we do need things like OpenStack. We need a way of being able to communicate directly into a mainframe without having to understand the intricacies of the mainframe. Otherwise, we're constantly going to have to go back to specialist resources, and people just won't bother. They, they know how to do it the other way. They'll do it the other way. So it's kind of hard. I, I, I read what I wrote here. General IT staff don't understand the mainframe. I, I, I wish I hadn't written it like that. That kind of blames the IT staff. It's not the IT staff's fault. The mainframe's different. And we celebrate that difference because in some ways that difference is, is absolutely fantastic. It's what makes the mainframe the mainframe. But to the general IT staff, it's different. It's not their fault. We need to make it so it's not as different. Okay? We need to make it so that Within reason, they, they know how to talk about a mainframe. They understand these things. It's not simple. We, we had a, a, a just a digress. We, we, we were working um, on, on the NIMSOFT integration into ZVM. Um, you, you can view it here. And an interesting thing came up. If, if you're running VMware, so on distributed, you're running VMware and you're running Linux. If your VMware instance is running or your system is running over 40% CPU utilization under VMware, then you probably want someone to go and take a look at that system. That, that would be getting towards, not the top of that threshold, but certainly that's a very busy system under VMware. If it was running at 80%, you, you probably want to start panicking at that point under VMware. If you're running Linux under ZVM and it's running at 80%, you should probably go and slap one of your system administrators for only running at 80%. So if I implement monitoring across Linux on Z and Linux on, on VMware, how do I represent that data to, to my IT operations guy? I've got two systems. One's running at 90% and one's running at 50. One of those systems is about to fail, and it's not the 90% one. I mean, so even these things that are, that, that, I mean, you know, maybe we just half, just divide everything by, point, by, by two, and I don't know, that's probably not a good idea. Don't, don't do that. Um, but we have to think these things through. We have to come up with some way. It's not just a matter of us not calling things, don't call disk space DASD. It's not just a matter of, of sort of nomenclature. The thing works differently, and we need, to, we need to address that. So support. Um, so I'm thinking here about things like Linux and applications that run under Linux. Um, not everything, not all commercially available software is, is, is actually supported on Linux on Z. It might run, but it might not be supported by the vendor. Again, this is one of these where we don't really have control over what vendors do. I mean, CA can. We can make sure our software runs under Linux on Z, and IBM can do the same thing. We don't really have direct control over some of the other vendors. But if we can create a market, if, if the customers at CA World double their use of Linux on Z, I, I guarantee you the, those vendors would start to, to pay attention, would start to certify their software. It's only about whether or not there's a market for that, that platform. That's really what makes the difference. So, so what can we do? Um, we collectively, uh, you know, CA as a vendor as, as well as customers. Um, so the, the first one, and it sounds a bit cheesy, actually it is a bit cheesy, but um, also sounds a bit cheesy. We, we should talk about this as much as we can. So I think in every presentation I've done since I joined CA, I, I mentioned this. So 
if you've heard this before, I apologize. Two years ago, when I joined CA, I, I came from EMC, and I used to run Linux systems for EMC. We used to run our own software in the cloud and provide that as a service to customers. So we ran Linux at huge scale. EMC owns mainframes. They make mainframe storage. So we had a data center with mainframes in it, and we were running Linux at scale. I didn't know you could run Linux on a mainframe. I certainly didn't know it would have been a really good platform to have deployed the kind of stuff we were deploying at scale, and it absolutely would have been. Uh, and we were trying to guarantee our customers five nines of uptime, which was actually incredibly difficult for us to do at scale. If we deployed on a mainframe, not so much. So we need, to, we need to talk about it. We need to get those success stories out there. We, we need to share that with, with the general community as much as we can. We need to make it open. Um, I, I would say the one thing that will make us fail is if it's not open. If people cannot connect to the mainframe, when people are deploying systems at the scale they're deploying today, they will give up. They'll try once or twice. When someone starts talking about interfaces they don't understand or if they have questions around security or if it just looks so different, they'll, they'll, they'll give up. I mean, they, they can't just keep trying. So I think the, uh, making it open is, is actually a very, very key part of this. Um, education. I, I was talking to a customer, one of the insurance companies, and one of the things that they did around Linux was they actually spent some time and, and, and money putting together training materials and training their own IT department. They had brown bag lunches and they, they got these guys together and they, they actually spent time educating the rest of IT to understand what the mainframe was generally, what the main, in this case specifically, what the mainframe meant as a platform for Linux. And it was incredibly successful. They, they then got customers, internal customers, coming to them and asking them to, to use Linux on Z. Not that big a deal to do, but, but an investment in, in sort of internal education. And then encourage vendors. So if you have a vendor and you, know, and you would like to deploy their software on Linux on Z, first thing to do is to ask them. Explain to them why you want to do it. If enough customers ask them to do it, they will do it. There's no technical reason that they can't support Linux on Z. It's simply that they start at the top of, okay, 50% of our customers are running Linux on X. 20% are running it on whatever, power. And when they get down to the bottom and there's only 5% of them running it on Z, that's, that's where it ends up. It ends up at the bottom. So, um, so what are we doing? We, we have spent a, actually a lot of time... Um, we spent a lot of time talking to our customers. We spent a lot of time analyzing the market, talking to our partners, talking to IBM. And what we've really discovered is that there are two things stopping Linux being successful. There are barriers to adoption. These are excuses that are used to not deploy Linux on Z. They might be valid excuses, but they're excuses not to do it. Oh, the software is not validated. The, the pricing model doesn't make sense, et cetera, et cetera. And then there are compelling reasons to do it. They sound like two sides of the same coin, but they're actually slightly different. So compelling reasons come from things like dis disaster recovery, from uptime, from the cost model. But there's still these barriers to adoption. And, and he, here's how the conversation goes. The mainframe guy goes and says, I want to deploy this application on, on Linux on Z. It's going to make sense. I'm going to save... $100,000 this year if I can do this. That's a compelling reason. But then enterprise IT turns around and says, well, you, you, that's great, and you would save some money, and, and we understand it's a great platform, but we need to run virus protection, a corporate policy, we need virus protection on that, on that instance, or it doesn't fit into our unified monitoring solution. So the first one's a compelling reason, but the barriers to adoption are too easily used to stop the deployment. So what we've decided to do is the, the compelling reasons really, to be honest, they already exist. IBM will come in and tell you how much cheaper it's going to be to do this on, on Linux, on Z, than it would be to do it on, on X. They'll come and do that for you today. There's plenty of papers that tell you about disaster recovery and how much better it is on the mainframe. 
so what we're focusing on is the other side of this. We're focusing on trying to reduce those or remove those barriers to adoption. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make Linux on Z, which is part of our cloud strategy for, for, for Z, we're trying to make it just look like Linux anywhere else. So, so what we have on the screen here, and, and it's actually demoed, um, I think I have it in, on the next slide, but it's actually demoed at the thin wedge of the pizza slice here on two different things. On the left-hand side, we have an integration from NIMSOFT, which is now called UIM, these both names. So UIM, which is actually over in section six over there, it's monitoring um, ZVM, so the hypervisor for Linux on Z. And we, all, we already have ways of monitoring Linux on Z from, from within NIMSOFT. So the reason we've done this one on the left is we have customers who are running Linux at scale on X. When we come to them and say, why don't you do some on Z, we want them to be able to just plug it in and have their level one, level two support guys, IT operations, monitoring all those systems. They have no way of knowing whether those systems are running on X, Z, power, in the cloud. They could be AWS, anywhere. They're just, run, they're just monitoring. In fact, they're not, they're not actually looking at the systems. They're actually looking at an application, SLA. So if that's green, then that application is healthy. If that, if that goes red, they click on it, takes them down, and it says, there's four components to that application. This component over here is red. I click on it. It says, OK, that, that's running on the mainframe. And here are the infrastructure components underneath it. Still probably doesn't know it's actually on the mainframe. He just sees some infrastructure. Maybe the disk thing has gone red clicks on the disk thing, tells him something's happening on the disk. Maybe at that point now, he has to pick up the phone and call the mainframe guy. What we've actually done here is, is taken it a little bit further. So if the issue is around ZVM or Linux, you can actually drill down, even get to console logs without leaving NIMSOFT or without leaving the NIMSOFT environment. Now I'm looking at console logs. So at that point, maybe when I pick up the phone and call the mainframe guy, which is, you know, at some point I have to call somebody if I can't fix it, at least I'm looking at a guest name, a console log. I know what the error message is. I know how frequent it is. I can call and tell someone exactly what the issue is. They can get on it, get it fixed very quickly. The number one reason people want to do unified monitoring is around reducing the mean time to resolution of faults. If this gets you to the person who's going to fix it for you really quickly, it, that's what they're looking for. Okay? On the right-hand side is a slightly different um, take. Still using um, UIM. Um, this is a, a product called Cloud Storage for System Z. And, and if you don't know Cloud Storage, again, it's demoed in the same space. Cloud Storage is a, uh, it, at one end, it's tape virtualization running under ZOS. So it looks like you're writing to a tape drive under ZOS. Um, but we, we then route that tape, effectively, through Linux out and either straight to a, a local private cloud device, NetApp, data domain, those kinds of devices, or actually through a device uh, called SteelStore, which used to be owned by Riverbed, and NetApp, NetApp just acquired it. So through SteelStore and then out to a cloud service, SoftLayer, um, Amazon, Google, pretty much, any, um, actually Microsoft Azure, that was, that was announced this week at, at the conference. Um, so... Great solution, everyone's very excited about it, but a customer comes to, well, not a customer, our customers come to us and say, that's great, but if I'm writing to tape here and it's not appearing in SoftLayer or Azure over here, how do I know what's gone wrong? I, I mean, where do I go and look? So what we did was we, we said, okay, well, we'll write a probe for VTape, which is the tape virtualization layer. We already have probes for ZVM and, and Linux under Z, there's already probes for things like NIMSOF, sorry, NIMSOF, <laughs> things like NetApp, Data Domain, Steel, Steel Store, out to soft layer, et cetera. So what we did was we put together on the right-hand side an end-to-end -end view of the components of an application. In this case, the application is cloud storage. So we can drill into this one thing. We can have a single tile that represents it. If it's green, it's fine. If it goes red, you click on it. It's going to take you in. It's going to show you all the components, the architecture of that application. Then I can click on a component. And in this case, I'm running out of scratch on, on one of the VTape instances. Um, now I know who to call, or I know, I know what the issue is. I call the right person straight to resolution. So two different examples of, of using a piece of technology. So although this is cool, again, what we're trying to do or not what we're trying to do, what we are doing is 
just making, managing these systems, whether it's cloud, whether it's Linux on Z, Linux on X, making it more normal, making it less of an exception, which, which reduces the costs and actually reduces those barriers to people doing this. So um, as I actually mentioned, the, the Linux on Z and, and the cloud storage are both available uh, for, for demos on the, on the booths here. Um, to take a look at them, they're, they're actually they're pretty short demos. Uh, well, actually, one of them is a demo. One of them is actually a live working uh, proof of concept. Um, but take a look at them. Get, we'd love your feedback on all of those. Um, and then tomorrow morning at 9.30, um, it's certainly around the cloud and Linux. Um, Lowell Higley, who's the product manager for um, uh, ZVM, VSE, and Linux on Z, will be presenting a, a session at 9.30. So thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, probably easier to come to the front rather than yelling in this noise. But uh, thank you, and enjoy the rest of the conference.